Hi everyone! In this video, we're going to learn how to make a 3D printable keychain like this one. This video assumes very little background with Fusion 360 or other CAD modeling tools. And so we're going to start with some simple basics and move up from there. This is a nice design to start with because it only uses a few different parameters and only a few different kinds of extrusions. Now if you're not familiar with these tools, we are going to essentially make a lot of this in two dimensions, like sketching, just like as you would in uh, Adobe Illustrator or other kinds of two-dimensional tools. And then we're going to extrude into 3D. So if I, rem if I turn off the body here, I can actually see that I have some underlying sketches that actually created this um, 3D object. So let's begin. So the very first thing that you want to do is create your two-dimensional sketch. So you create sketch and now it asks you which three-dimensional plane do you want to place that sketch on. So we're going to place it here. And because a, a keychain, we're going to make a rectangular keychain. We select the rectangle tool and we'll make a two-point rectangle. Now it really doesn't matter what kind of size that we want to make our keychain, but of course this is going to be in our pocket, so we don't want it to be too large. And I was playing around with different sizes earlier. I think that 34 millimeters by, and I just hit the tab key to switch over to the, to the length, by 46 millimeters is a, is a reasonably good size. So now we already have kind of the basic shape of, um, of our keychain, and really we can, we can extrude this if we want into three dimensions. So let's hit the extrude tool, and notice we dropped out of sketch mode, and I'll select what I'm going to actually extrude on, which is, which is what we just sketched here. And you see how I can pull this up? Now obviously we don't want to make it huge, so I think um, two millimeters tall is a reasonable size. And so there we go. Now we have this kind of cuboid object. Um, but remember, in our design, we had rounded corners. Well, there's a number of these tools up here called uh, these modification tools. This one is called a fillet. And that's what we're going to use on these corners. So to do that, we're going to select this tool. Or for you, it might be down here. I just added this into my quick access menu by clicking here and then pinning it to the toolbar because it's very common. You can also hit the F key. So we'll click this. Okay, so we'll select. There we are. Okay. And now we are going to tell it how much to fill it. So that's what this tool does. Um, so I think 13 millimeters is too much, but I think 5.5 or something looks reasonably good. So there we have it. Now we've, we're getting there with our basic shape. It looks pretty good. And I can always hit top like this. I can use this view box to control. Otherwise, I'm also using the middle mouse button. I'm on Windows here. I'm using my middle mouse button um, to pan or shift middle mouse button to move my view around. All right, so we can do a few different things, but uh, obviously one thing we need is a hole here. So we can go back into sketch mode and we'll click here. So now we're gonna actually have another sketch. Um, and so we have two sketches. We have our original, which is now hidden, and we have, which you can tell by this light bulb, and we have our new sketch. So let's add in via a circle maybe a hole right here. I think the hole should be around five millimeters. And maybe, yeah, okay. So I just hit escape, but I think five millimeters is reasonable. I think right there is good. All right, so there we have our hole. Now, we, ha we have our place for our hole, but we've got to create it. So to do that, um, we're going to select it, and then we're going to extrude again. So that's right here. You can also hit the E command, extrude. We're going to select what to extrude. And um, over here, you have a whole bunch of different things that you can do. So you can, you know, I can just directly manipulate it and extrude up, but I want to extrude down, obviously. So that's not what I want to do. So I'll, I'll click on it again. Um, but the cool thing is we can actually tell it this extent, this distance. So you can put in how 
far in inches or millimeters you want to extrude, but we can also say to object. And so I'm going to say, let's go all the way to the back side and select the back of this. And notice now that we have a hole that goes through the full extent of, uh, of our keychain, right? So now we're, we're getting pretty far. I think another little thing we might want to do is do um, a fillet on this edge. Let's try something like that. Be 1.6 or something. I think that's really up to you. Um, we'll keep the bottom as is. So, right, so that, that's just kind of for aesthetics. Okay, now we can design our keychain. Like we can put other things. Oh, well, we also want to do a fillet on this part. So for that, um, I think 1.5 millimeters. Ah, it's going to run into the other fillet, which is a problem. So we're going to have to try 1.4 maybe. There we go. Well, and this is interesting. So now I can show you. So what was happening there is this fillet was running to this other fillet. As I can actually go back to this one and I can say edit feature and I can make it I can make it smaller. So I can put oh my gosh, that's not smaller. I can go here and I can say one. And then I can also edit what I just did, and I can make that slightly larger. I think 1.5 might look better. Okay, so I think this looks reasonably good. All right, um, so now we're going to add in our decoration. Um, and for that, I'm going to use the University of Washington MHCID, or Masters in HCI and Design uh, program logo. So I can hit Insert SVG. So here's the, the SVG. I had previously gone into Illustrator and gone save as and in Illustrator you can say SVG and then parameterize it if you want. So that's what I had done previously. So let's go back to Fusion. I'm just going to grab this one. And it asks you to select a place to put it. So I'm going to put it here. And then, of course, it comes in and it looks hum both humongous and in the wrong spot. So I'm going to move it. And this is really up to you about where you want to place it. Now, of course, you can only 3D print text of a certain size. And I think we're really going to be right at the limit of that with the 3D printer that I have, but um, I think that looks reasonably good. And yeah, so you can see it's sitting right up on top there. But this is also a sketch. When I imported it, it imported it to a new sketch. So um, let's see. So there's a few things. I don't need these external lines, so I'm just selecting them by clicking on them and then hitting the delete key. All right. And okay, so really the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to extrude these. So we're going to use the uh, the um, selection tool here. Oh, it's called a window selection. So we'll just draw a boundary box over this text. And then we're going to just eliminate a few artifacts that we don't want. So we don't want the middle of our letters to be part of the extrusion. So let's just select all of those all right there we go So, and then we're going to um, extrude again. 
and in this case we'll do one millimeter up. So let's see, there it is, that's the text. Whoa, we got a lot of bodies here. Let's show the underlying body. So I was trying to figure out why it created all these new bodies, and it's because I did new body for every one of those entities um, versus a join. So that's that's what I want to do. So I'm going to go over here and edit feature, and rather than new body, I'm going to click join, and then it that extrusion will just become part of the old body. So that's actually what I want. So there we go. That is our keychain. Okay, and now to um, 3D print it, we're going to hit Make 3D Print, and we have to select what we want to 3D print, so we're going to select our body here. All these other things are fine, then we're going to hit OK, and we can call it HCID Keychain, and then we're going to open up that file. There we go. Okay, so... And the way you interact with the Kira window is different than the way you interact with Fusion. So that's it right there. And so um, we don't need supports for this. All of these settings look OK. So we can hit Prepare, and it'll show you how long it'll take. So it's a 38-minute min print. So in 38 minutes, we'll have our own keychain.